Hi everyone, welcome to Reality Paint. This video is going to recap all the changes we've been making regarding a uh, low polygon workflow or a CAD-like workflow where you don't have uniformly distributed polygons. Now I'm going to show you what all that means and I'm going to show you all the features that we've been adding in over the past month or so to, um, to really accommodate this different workflow which um, <clears throat> you may not have actually encountered yourself before, maybe you have and you didn't explain, you understand exactly why things weren't working the way you would like them to. We're going to go through all that right now. So let us first start off by showing you the type of model that Reality Paint was typically designed for in the beginning. Now it, is, uh, it has been designed for models that are have a relatively uniform polygon distribution. That means uh, each little polygon triangle is uh, you know they're roughly the same size relative to each other all right so let's take a look at the wireframe here's one model I just look there it is um, and if we look here at the at the wireframe structure each one of these polygons you know they're not that different in size from each other they're kind of evenly distributed around they get a little more dense in some places and a little less dense in other places but all in all uh, they're well distributed and they're generally designed uh, from a subdivision point of view where it, the original model that this was made from was was not this resolution. It was a lower resolution, and then it was subdivided, all right, into into uh, to uh, to get what you see here. You can kind of tell just by the way these sort of patches work out. But anyway, that's not important. Uh, what, um, now let's take a look at how why that makes a difference in reality paint. Now here we can say. Uh, this is a classic example. The ear is this little complex piece of geometry with lots of little nooks and crannies and stuff hidden behind other things. Now let's look at these polygons right here, these vertices at the edges here. Now I'm going to rotate it like this so they're behind the ear. Now let's take a paint tool, paint brush. Uh, this is relatively new so we're going to talk about that soon. But per vertex is typically uh, the method which you would use for hidden surface removal in the, um, up until now. So what that means is that each vertex is going to be tested for visibility and if it's uh, hidden all right, then that means it's going to uh, we're not going to affect it and if it's not we are so um, in this case when we're painting right let's do this little paint here you see that the um, vertices behind here um, got basically a strength of zero applied to them and the ones over here had like a hundred percent and then in between the polygon it sort of fades from one to the next right so that's how we dealt with hidden surfaces were uh, and it and in cases like this it's generally easy to deal with like you normally wouldn't pick you normally paint this whole thing with a certain color and saturate it with uh, with uh, no hidden surface removal and then you would do all the details and those little nooks and crannies wouldn't really matter that much um, so let me show you that okay let's undo so you might do something like this and paint all the way through it with just a solid color or, a, or a, a uniform texture. And then you might go over here per vertex and choose another color and then paint like this and something like that. You know, uh, whoops, my mistake, hotkey error. Now, any case, then uh, what we decided to do is, because we started uh, work on these low polygons, is that we had this per vertex. But I'm not going to talk about that right now because it's not going to be. I want to show you that uh, in the context of a uh, non-uniform, uniformly distributed model like this. So anyway, uh, that hidden surface removal is one of the big um, things that sort of depends upon this uniformity. All right, now let me show you a case where that doesn't work the way you would like it. Um, here is a model of a sectional couch um, that uh, we got from uh, I think Google SketchUp, um, the Google 3D warehouse that is often uh, a repository for models made in Google SketchUp or similar CAD-like workflows. And uh, so let's take a look at the wireframe first. Now look at this. Doesn't this look awfully different in the wireframe? See this is one big triangle here. It's not like a soup of a whole bunch of uniformly distributed triangles or polygons or quads, right? It's just one big triangle and then these long thin ones in between to make the curves. Now this is really typical of a CAD-like workflow because they tend to make shapes by you, like drawing out like a 2D shape, like maybe a rounded uh, 
bo uh, box, uh, square, rectangle, and then extruding it out, right, and making, resulting in shapes sort of like this. Um, and we see here, this part is, well, it, this wreaked havoc on reality paint and uh, until we made the changes which I'm about to show you. So let's think of it, you maybe make a shape here and then you extrude this whole thing out. There's, there's absolutely no vertices in between here whatsoever. These are just long, thin, 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 long triangles. And some of these things are even so close together, they, they're, uh, let's see, wait, let's look at here. Looks there, when you get these thicker lines, that's actually a really long, thin triangle. All right, that, that one little thick line, that's actually not just a, it, um, a single line, it is in fact a triangle. And <laughs> what happens is, is that the way the, uh, the math works when you're sort of calculating, all right, I'm gonna paint here, where should everything go? Uh, it sort of breaks down in this uh, long, thin triangle uh, uh, case. And I'm gonna show you to see if you can see here. I right, see, look, these polygons are just, they're not even getting a, uh, oh wait, hang on a sec, let's just, uh, oh yeah, the pervertex. I got two issues going on here. See, there's a lot of little issues here that if you didn't know what was going on, you would just think, oh my God, the software's not working right. So uh, first off, let us um, address the two issues. Remember that the uh, that uh, per vertex uh, culling, which was the mainstay up until now um, for um, hidden surface removal. Now we see this vertex up here is gonna be hidden, right? Because it's behind this thing, like uh, for this triangle. See this big triangle? If we extend up here, up here, there's going to be a vertex, and that's hidden because it's behind this stuff. So if we paint here, all right, like this, we see the paint fades from here to there, all right, and um, and if we wanted a solid color all the way through, it's going to present some difficulty, right? So we introduced this uh, per pixel uh, uh, hidden surface removal method, and what that does is it calculates the visibility of each pixel on uh, that's on the surface of the texture map and then uh, uses the depth buffer to figure out if it is behind something or if it's in front of or if there's nothing in front of it so let's get rid of this wireframe and paint this bit here again and then we notice see that we're going to talk about that in a second but if we look right here right ignoring those little artifacts right we're going to go like this and we can see okay there is see that stuff was hidden before that did not get paint the stuff here in front that is not hidden, that uh, that did get paint, and this is good. So this is one of the improvements we made. So it allows you to kind of have this um, near pixel perfect stenciling effect. So you're not painting on stuff that's hidden that you can't see, like, uh, you know, because there, there's always complex geometry, there's stuff overlapping other things. And if you're just painting on the front, and you don't realize that you're painting through the model and affecting other things. You know, yeah, I mean, like two hours later, you can go look at those other parts, and you can find out you destroyed you know, other textures that you made, uh, other parts of the texture you made previously. So that's why this painting on what you see and this hidden surface removal is uh, very important, right? But you can also optionally say, I want the paint to go straight through. And then you go like this and it goes straight through and you don't worry about anything. But um, that's only good for some of the more simpler cases, simpler cases. So per pixel uh, method is what you want for doing this kind of low polygon work. And just as a side note, we're actually looking at taking these types and just sort of unifying them into a simplified uh, hidden surface removal method. And um, we're not 100% sure how we're gonna do this um, uh, seamlessly yet, so we're gonna be, take it slowly. We don't want to take away any features that you might actually wanna use. But, the, but the, the logic is that we want to use this per pixel mainly when painting. We want to sort of see if we can just eliminate all the circumstances when you're using a paint tool, why you would even need to use these. We want to just make it so this or these are the options that, all, that are all you need. But likewise, when you're doing um, a selection or a deformation, those things are naturally just working on vertices or polygons. So those ones, uh, the per pixels method doesn't necessarily make sense. Uh, you do want to be calculating the visibility of each vertex, so on and so forth. So we want to make this a little more seamless, so your input would actually be uh, would really uh, uh, welcome in this manner. If you want to, if you have any strong feelings about that, you can send us off an email. But anyway, I'm just letting you know what our intentions are. We want to simplify this, right? but we're going to take it slow. So 
that's the one problem solved here is this per pixel. Uh, so now we can stencil at this. We don't have to worry about the polygon distribution at all. It's sort of independent of that polygon distribution. And the second is, as I alluded to before, is these long, thin triangles. Look at that. Long and thin, right? This wreaks havoc on the math, or at least it did, um, up until um, version uh, 1.0.3, where am I? 0.1, right? So I'm going to show it here again. So I'm going to paint over here and look at that, right? What happened is, is that uh, <laughs> the math when you're doing these sort of triangle calculations and figuring out where the paint's supposed to go on the pixels, when those triangles get really thin, the math would break down as far as all that's concerned. If you're into math and you're interested in looking it up, it has to do with very centric coordinates. That is where if you have this triangle shape, you can sort of uh, come up with a set of coordinates that are relative to that triangle to decide where you're going to, in this case, put you know how you're going to be coloring the pixels and so on and so forth. So, um, is space? I wouldn't say it, I wouldn't call it a bug. I would call it just a uh, a shortcoming because it was working the way it's supposed to. It just turns out that when those triangles are really thin, the math gets funny and the errors become large. So we had to come up with an alternative way of doing it. <laughs> so and we did. And I'm going to now, if I'm done with this, I'm going to show you. Uh, how it works using the latest version uh, 1.0.4.1. Now, uh, here we go. You have to forgive me that I prefer to use a um, the, minimum, the smallest window size possible when doing these video captures. It makes thing, everything easier to see when you're uh, viewing the video. So anyway, not important. Here we go. I'm gonna load the same model again in the latest version. Now, Let's take a look in here. Uh, let's just sort of rotate it up around. Let's change the red. That just makes it easier to see. And choose my paintbrush here. I'm using the hotkeys, by the way, just so you know that why even is going so fast. I have paint paintbrush. This is right click assign hotkey. I have that bound to a hotkey, uh, the numeric key one. I like to use the numbers one through nine um, for uh, hotkeying sort of commonly used stuff. Uh, you can sort of choose um, yours, how you like to do that yourself. So anyway, notice I just painted over the same area and you didn't get any of this, this, these errors happening. It's really, uh, eh, I mean, it's interesting to, uh, to me as a programmer, but it's not very interesting to you as to uh, how I did, uh, we did this, but um, uh, it works better now, okay? Let's just say that. So uh, we've uh, re-engineered the way it works made it work good in these 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 um, these uh, extreme circumstances with these long triangles uh, without having those errors in the math which made those little speckles show up so that's another improvement uh, for this uh, sort of um, how do you say non-uniform polygon distribution I guess that's the way we'll refer to it it's non-uniform all right so uh, okay there's another problem solved regarding uh, these low polygons now Low polygons is actually, that's misleading because this model itself has, let's take a look here, uh, uh, 24,000 polygons. But this sort of scenario often comes up when dealing with low polygon models. So uh, sometimes I'll just say low polygons when, but what I really mean is um, non-uniform polygon distribution. And now the uh, another issue here is now if we look at this, this um, uh, uh, the sort of the leg here. Now you see this nice right angle triangle. This is a new thing up in, because uh, previously, um, I can't tell you which uh, version off the top of my head it changed. I think it was, I think 1.3, 1.0.3 is the one that um, in first introduced maximum smoothing angle. So for the object here, we have a max smoothing angle. And if you put this at 180, that's just 180 degrees is the maximum value for this. So that means that uh, uh, when, we, when we're, we're doing this, we're calculating these surface normals, right? Uh, what you're doing is on, you're doing it on a per vertex basis and uh, you're, you're averaging all the normals of the polygons around it and then you're saying, okay, so let's take a look here. So you're saying, okay, the vertex here has a normal which is the average of all of these normals, right? And that's why this 
uh, what should be a rigid surface here looks kind of smooth until you kind of get a silhouette of it there and you say, hey, that's actually pretty rigid. But here it looks kind of smooth, right? And so uh, when dealing with this type of model, this can not only lead to just uh, visual anomalies like this where you see something kind of squishy that should be rigid, uh, it also affects, let's just say, the uh, fade by angle feature. This is an extremely important feature. Um, if you've been using a, a Rally Paint for a while now, you know that this can come in very handy. So if I'm doing this, what it does is you can see here, it's it's fading it by angle, but the angle is done on a per vertex basis. So it's, again, it is working. It's assuming this this leg here is more of a rounded um, object and not a square rigid object, right? So, but if we now go back to manage your sofa uh, and turn this to 89. So the, the reason why 89 is a magic number is just short of 90 degrees. So what you're saying is that, okay, uh, when you're calculating these sort of, uh, these normals, um, uh, for this vertex on this polygon, you're saying, okay, I'm only gonna average the neighboring polygon normals, right? If the angle between this one and this one is less than this number, but in this case, it's a 90 degrees. So it's saying, well, okay, here, I'm starting off here. All right, I'm not gonna include this one, that's 90 degrees. I'm not gonna include this one, that's 90 degrees. So, okay, that normal is just gonna be as it, it, the same, the vertex normal here is gonna be the same as the polygon normal, and hence, it's just gonna be flush going in this direction, and that's what you want, right? And so likewise, you do the same thing here. So uh, this is a, a very um, important feature for dealing with this type of model, is to get this rigidness where you want it while still getting the smoothness here. See over here, right, when you're doing these, when you calculate these surface normals, that's smooth, that's doing the average because <coughs> those angles are not, they're less than 89 degrees. So again, it's not just visual, it actually affects the way certain features work that are dependent upon the surface normal like fade by angle. So that was very important. And uh, on a similar note, with this per pixel, because uh, this doesn't work, it wouldn't work well on a um, very steep angle like this. Say we're here, 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 and you're painting here. See these little pixels that are on the side here, but this is a really sharp angle. Uh, there ends up being a lot of error in the uh, the way that uh, the depth buffer and the way that uh, the hidden surface removal is calculated. And if we didn't consider the angle of that surface with the viewport, um, then you could get some anomalies. So what we do is we say, okay, if this angle is really sharp, we're gonna fade the paint away and uh, just kind of assume it to be hidden. And so if this, um, where are we here again? Uh, if this value is at 180, it just won't work very well. And if this is at 89, these rigid um, angles will work better. So uh, if you're uh, like that, the, the human character we had, right? For the, a model like that, uniformly distributed polygons, designed to be subdivided, everything's kind of squishy and smooth. You want to go in here, set that to 180, and forget about it. If you're dealing with rigid models like this, with these hard angles, you're going to want to pay attention to this value and make sure that everything looks the way you would want it to look. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, so we we've uh, first let's we recap. We now we can paint on these really long um, uh, triangles, right, and polygons. Uh, we can do the uh, per pixel uh, uh, hidden surface removal, so we don't care about that polygon distribution. We can just paint like this, and uh, let's turn that back on per pixel and get rid of the fade by angle. There we go, and get this sort of. Nice, that's harsh stenciling of what's hidden, what's not. If you can see back there, uh, uh, not the best example, but let's go here again. So we can get that, this sort of thing. See that? Nice. And uh, and yes, and with these rigid uh, angles can be preserved while keeping this other stuff smooth, all right? And now the absolute last feature, which, uh, oh, sorry, feature, but the consideration is selecting polygons. So now if you say, okay, I want to select this surface over here, right? I just want to select these polygons so I can isolate them or do something with them. Uh, so uh, let's see. Okay, when it's in per vertex, for example, here, right? And I got select vertices. 
If I click in the middle, right, you see uh, nothing's happening because there's no vertices within that circle, right? So if I click up here, I can see they're getting selected, right? And I have to kind of capture those vertices to select, right? But when you have a model like this, you might be in here and see the vertex here is way up and it's hidden back there. And you might have something else in front of this. So I can be here going selection brush and I can be like, ah, I can't even select anything. This is annoying. Why, what's wrong, right? So uh, what I'm going to say is that this we're not 100% done considering this situation. But for if you have a selection brush and use the smart calling method, right now you can go like this. And, oh, and you say select polygons. This is important. Because if you're selecting vertices, if you're selecting vertices, it's going to say, well, you're selecting vertices. So if you're not selecting the vertices, then nothing's happening. But if you're selecting polygons, the way it worked before is if you had this, uh, it, you clicked in the middle, you're still not sort of capturing any, uh, uh, you're not capturing any of these vertices, and it just might not have selected properly. Or if there's, uh, uh, like over here, right? You see, uh, even if it's selected, say the first one you clicked on, right? All these neighboring uh, triangles next to it, right? There, there's no vertices being captured, and it just wouldn't get selected, right? So you just sit here clicking, and nothing was really happening. So, uh, but now selection tools, selection brush with smart calling and polygons, because we want to select polygons. You go like this, and they and it gets selected. So you can click in the middle of polygons and just select them, right? And so uh, you can hold shift to add, and you can go like here and select all these as well. And you might say, okay, I wanna lock these, or I wanna hide them, or I wanna create a display group, uh, or uh, anything like that. Um, what are we doing, there we go. So um, anything that requires you to sort of isolate a polygon. Uh, I'm gonna use the, uh, here I'm gonna just show you the hot selection view with the shift space, so it, it doesn't just flash on and off. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's a few issues left with this that we, we still have to address. That is using, uh, for example, a box selection. At this point, um, if you're, uh, where, where are we doing box select, box select? Okay, here we go. If, if you're clicking like this in the middle and nothing's getting, there's no vertices in there, nothing's gonna happen. So uh, that is a something we still gotta work on. Um, and likewise with the lasso. Because we want to be able to say, you just click on this and you select those polygons. You don't want to be thinking about, oh, where are the vertices I have to do? You just want to click it and select it. So these are improvements that still have to be made. It's, I think that's probably, I'm going to say this, uh, knocking on wood, probably the last consideration we have to do to make models like this work just as good as the previous ones I showed you with the uniform polygon distribution. So we really want to make it as friendly with different types of 3D models as possible without you having to sit here nerding out and thinking about all these uh, technical considerations. You just want to get here and paint on this like it's a real model, like it's like a physical thing. You don't want to be thinking about the math of the surface normals and the vertices and the triangles and all this stuff. You just want to treat this like you would a physical object. And so we want to make the software uh, behave like that as much as possible within reason. So that is on the to-do list. So yes, um, so in conclusion, <coughs> we have uh, put a lot of effort in towards uh, solving these little problems, which will make the software more palatable for situations uh, like this that, uh, that result in a different workflow than you normally would, a different type of modeling than you would have encountered if you're doing modeling for you know games and movies and uh, renders where you, you know, it's a different style, right? And the first instinct for me to say is, all right, this is a, it's a bad model. So just, you know, it doesn't work well in the software and be done with it, but that's short-sighted. I'm like, well, what can we do to make the software uh, work well with as many situations as possible? And these are the solutions that we're coming up with. Again, they're not as flashy uh, as some of the other uh, features we've been adding, but extremely important, especially when it comes to uh, expanding, getting, uh, new types of uh, users for reality paint uh, so then you know then we have a bigger market and uh, we can keep the software going adding in more features it's really good it's extremely important that we do this and so um, <laughs> we hope that uh, that you get that you yourself can uh, get in here and start using these different types of models in reality paint uh, oh, wait, 
uh, here's a situation actually. Just say you're, you normally just do character development and this sort of thing is, hasn't really been that interesting to you. You're like, well, what if I wanted a couch like this one for a scene? I have some characters and I'm doing the room and I want to put a couch in the background. And you go on to uh, uh, Google 3D Warehouse and you download one and it's like this and you're like, well, okay, well, there's no UV mapping, right? And <laughs> I want to texture it and it's like this and you can either spend half the day doing UV mapping for it and then um, uh, then the other half texturing it, doing it all manually like in Photoshop the usual way or we can do this. Right now let's just assume there's no UV mapping on this whatsoever. So we can just say control A select all, uh, utility tools, paint setup wizard, uh, leave the default options here with auto UV map, execute. Right? Okay. And Da, da. Here we go. Oh, there it is. Okay. Now, uh, if I push to, uh, oh, sorry, that's my custom hotkey I set up for the resolution visualizer. We can see it did an auto UV mapping, and all these these are like seams, and these are sort of regions on the UV map, and uh, and so we've just auto UV mapped this object. So one click of a button, and it's ready to texture. Right. So when then we go here, let's turn that back off. You can go in, you can start painting, yada, yada, yada. And then you can export the texture map, export the model with the new UV map. I think very important. And bring it into your uh, your software, set up the textures, render it, done. All right? you don't, if it's a background object, you don't want to spend time uh, doing a manual UV, UV mapping. It's, you just want to quickly do it and work on the more important stuff. So this is a case where hey, you might not have con considered or cared about this type of model before, but now, hey, you got a whole new set of tools. Go to Google Warehouse, uh, download any one of these models. Previously wouldn't work in this workflow, and now they do. Bang, 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 throw it, you know, throw it a model with a nice texture, put it in the background, done, all right? So, uh, yeah, we, so we hope you found this, uh, whole, this video very informative, uh, and uh, we want to keep you in touch and let you know what's, uh, uh, what we're doing with the software. And uh, it's constantly evolving, as you might have noticed that we have a lot of these little updates coming around. That's where the auto updater uh, comes in handy when you say help check for updates. Uh, one thing to note about this, I'm going to say, is that we're going to change our server pretty soon because a lot of times this is just kind of failing and it's just uh, you'd have to just try it three or four times depending on how busy the network is. And it's, it's kind of annoying and it's we just narrowed it down to the server is just timing out and just not being nice. So we're going to be changing our servers. In the meantime, if this fails, try it three or four times and it'll it'll probably work one of those times and we're going to be working on that to make this a little more reliable. But anyway, check for updates. Always check for updates. Uh, keep it um, keep it up to date and uh, we're going to be adding the all these new features in to make the software as you know, as user friendly as humanly possible within reason. So, anyway, Thank you very much for watching and uh, uh, stay tuned for uh, future videos because we got a lot more of this sort of stuff coming up, all right? So uh, see you then.